well, what proof is there that God exists? The way I would approach this is, is not in terms of proof. Uh, within science, we think in terms of, of evidence. And evidence typically does not prove that something is true. Rather, evidence uh, provides us with some reason to believe that a, a scientific hypothesis is true, for example. So what we're looking for is, is not absolute proof, but rather looking for different pieces of evidence that together might give us a, a powerful case for the existence of God. And so the way I would go about this would be to say, well, let's look at various features of our universe and see if they make sense from the perspective of belief in God. If belief in God would provide us with a better explanation of those features of the universe, or to put it another way, that those features of the universe would be the sort of things we would expect in a universe created by God, but would be very surprising in a universe that wasn't created by God. Well, perhaps the most fundamental of these is, of course, the existence of the universe itself, because there's a lot of explanation to do to, to try to explain the very existence of the universe. Uh, and if we focus more specifically on the origin of the universe, insofar as we have evidence for the universe having had a beginning, well, this is exactly what we would expect if there's a God. In fact, this is what the Bible teaches us in the, in the first verse, that in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. So a beginning, evidence for a beginning of the universe, which we have in science, is just the sort of thing we would expect if there's a God. But this is very surprising if there's no God. And many atheists have been motivated by the idea of, of trying to avoid the idea that the universe had a beginning. But we could also think about other features of the universe. We could think about the order of the universe. One of the things that scientists look for is, is to discover laws that describe how the universe works. Um, and and th th this is fundamentally a part of, of science. Um, but, but why should we look for those, those laws? Why would we expect the universe to be like that, to be so orderly? Well, the early scientists had an answer for this. Many of them were Christians who were looking for laws in the world precisely because they believed in God. They believed in a law giver. Uh, and so, again, when we find these laws, these scientific laws and these discoveries are made, this is the sort of thing they expected in a universe that was created by God, but would have been very surprising in a world that wasn't created by a, a rational agent. One aspect of, of these laws is that we typically describe them using mathematics. And again, some of these early scientists described, uh, such as Galileo, described mathematics as the language of nature. That that basically God had written nature in the language of mathematics. And so one of the questions that has, has puzzled many scientists is why mathematics is, is so effective in describing the world. Why is the universe like that? Um, and, and again, this makes sense if the world has been created by an intelligent, rational creator. We have a, an explanation for the effectiveness of, of mathematics. We could also think about other examples of order, um, very specific ones. So the fine tuning of the universe, uh, that the universe we find ourselves in is, is just right for life, that there's a, a whole range of features of our universe that are, are uh, balanced very finely. So that had they been slightly different, life would be impossible. Um, there simply wouldn't be any life. There wouldn't be a star like our sun, uh, uh, or, or planets um, orbiting it and, and, and so forth, that galaxies wouldn't exist. And a whole range of these features had to be just right. Now again, this makes perfect sense in a universe created by God. It's a sort of example of order that we would expect in a universe that has been created by an intelligent mind. But there'd be no reason to, spec to expect this, this order, this very precise order that we find in fine tuning in a world that was um, just the, the result of, of blind chance. But we could also think about other um, evidence for God. And one, I mean, there, there are many others that we could think of, but I would also look at the person of Jesus. When we look at the, the life of Jesus, the person he was, the claims he made about himself, and in particular, when we look at uh, his death and what took place after that, I, I think there's very powerful evidence for the resurrection of Jesus. 
Um, now, what we mean by the resurrection is that, that God raised Jesus for the dead. If we were trying to argue that Jesus just rose naturally from the dead, this wouldn't make any sense. But, but if there's a God, or if it's even possible that there's a God, then when we look at the evidence of things like the empty tomb, when we look at, which is well established historically, when we look at the fact that many people who knew Jesus believed that they had seen him alive again after his death, including some skeptics, and when we look at the transformation of these early Christians, uh, in terms of belief in the resurrection, how was it that this early group of, of Jews came to believe that God had resurrected Jesus? Um, something that was meant to happen at the end of the world, not during history. Um, and not only that, but came to worship this human being. How could a, a devout Jew do this? These things are well established historically. So what is the best explanation of, of all of these facts? And I would say that far and away, the best explanation is the Christian claim that God raised Jesus from the dead. So no one of these bits of evidence proves the existence of God. But I would suggest that when we look at them all together, it makes belief in God very reasonable.